Hello guys, what a week it has been. In this video, I am going to talk exclusively about SpaceX's second crewed lunar lander contract and NASA's Artemis 1 launch. Before talking about NASA's Artemis 1 mission, let me take you through SpaceX's latest contract awarded by NASA. Yesterday night, a few hours before the Artemis 1 launch, NASA announced that SpaceX has been awarded the second moon landing contract for Artemis 4 mission. Why do you think SpaceX was awarded this contract? Well, I want to point out a few things. SpaceX's proposed lunar variant of Starship is the only vehicle that is close to a demonstration mission. NASA officially invited other U.S. space companies for a second human landing system in September, in addition to the existing Starship contract. But, till today, no other company has come up with a feasible model. With SpaceX poised to conduct the first test flight of Starship next month, NASA went ahead and gave the contract to SpaceX. SpaceX still has to prove a lot after their test flight mission including a critical element called orbital refueling. NASA already said SpaceX will play a key part in the Artemis program and their partnership will likely continue in the long haul. Of course, in the coming years, there will be other lunar landers for moon astronauts but for the moment, NASA's only option is Starship. Reacting to the announcement, Elon Musk thanked NASA for trusting them and said SpaceX would not let NASA down. Okay, let's talk about the Artemis 1 mission. I can't believe NASA launched the SLS rocket to space today. The mighty Saturn V rocket has been dethroned as NASA's most powerful rocket. As usual, a launch attempt of the SLS rocket wouldn't be complete without a hydrogen leak issue. The prop loading of the SLS rocket went pretty smoothly today until teams detected a hydrogen leak at the replenish valve of the core stage. The only option to troubleshoot the leak was to fix it manually. The launch management team literally sent a team of three members known as the Red Crew to the launch pad to torque a few bolts located at the side of the core stage. It was probably the most dangerous job in the entire launch preparation. They had to climb up the mobile launcher and fix the leaks with their hands while the prop loading was actively going on to the rocket. The Red Crew were the real heroes today and they saved the day for NASA, but they safely exited the pad after fixing the issue. After everything was looking healthy for liftoff, the Eastern Range came up with a no-go callout following a radar sight down due to a faulty Ethernet cable. But luckily the cable was swapped and everything was looking good for liftoff. After numerous attempts and months of delay, NASA's most advanced, most powerful, and most expensive rocket soared above the launch pad 39B, lighting up the dark Florida sky at 1.47 a.m. It was a spectacular show for the people watching from the Saturn V Center inside the Kennedy Space Center. The third time was the charm for NASA and the successful launch of the Artemis 1 mission marked the beginning of humans' return to the Moon program. Now, the Orion spacecraft is on its way to lunar orbit. Congratulations to everyone involved in this magnificent achievement. Next up, let's focus on our own Starship rocket at the Boca Chica launch site. We are just two static fire tests away from the test flight. I really can't wait for that day, the excitement level is rising up now after today's events. I know a lot of SpaceX fans, including me are not a huge fan of the SLS rocket citing its launch cost but SpaceX is a part of the Artemis program and we have to follow these launches. That is it for this video and thank you for watching till the end. 